dear students i am dr k m kadarishan working as director of the center for graph theory in ayanadar janak himal college sivakasi in this video we prove the most powerful theorem in group theory namely the fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms in every field of mathematics there is a fundamental theorem of that particular field it is known as fundamental theorem since it is an important theorem in that field and most of the theorems in that field depend on this theorem in mathematics the fundamental theorem of a field field means either arithmetic or algebra or galois theory and so on is considered to be the most central and the important one to that field for example some of the fundamental theorems of mathematics are fundamental theorem of arithmetic fundamental theorem of algebra fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms fundamental theorem of ring homomorphisms fundamental theorem of calculus and so on the fundamental theorem of arithmetic in number theory states that every integer n greater than 1 is either a prime number or a product of prime numbers most of the theorems in number theory depends upon this fundamental theorem of arithmetic in algebra there is a fundamental theorem namely fundamental theorem of algebra every polynomial of degree n greater than 1 with the complex coefficients has at least one root in the complex field it is the basic result in theory of equations so that theorem is known as the fundamental theorem of algebra in this way there are several fundamental theorems in mathematics today let us discuss the fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms first let us define a homomorphism of a group phi is a mapping from one group g into another group g bar we say that this phi is a homomorphism if for all a comma b belongs to g pi of a b is equal to pi of a into pi of b if pi satisfies this condition for every ab in the group g where g is the domain of the function pi then we say that pi is a homomorphism for example uh, define pi from g to g itself in this example this g bar is equal to g itself we define pi from g to g by pi of x equal to e where e is the identity element of g then this pi is a homomorphism another homomorphism is pi from g to g defined by pi of x equal to x for all x belongs to g this pi is also a homomorphism now consider the group r comma plus r is the set of all real numbers and r star is the set of all non zero real numbers. r star comma dot is a group and define pi from r comma plus to r star comma dot by pi of a is equal to 2 power a then this pi is also a homomorphism because pi of a b equal to 2 power a, a plus b and this 2 power a plus b is 2 power a into 2 power b 2 power a into 2 power b is pi of a into pi of b so this pi satisfies the condition pi of a b is equal to pi of a into pi of b therefore this pi is a homomorphism now let us define the kernel of a homomorphism suppose pi is a homomorphism from one group into another group g bar the kernel of the homomorphism is denoted by k pi which is defined by ker pi equal to k pi equal to the set of all x in g such that pi of x equal to e bar where e bar is the identity element of g bar 
That means this K pi is the elements in G whose image under pi is the identity element. Or in other words, this K pi or R pi is the inverse image of E bar under pi. That is K pi is pi inverse of E bar. Consider this figure. Here pi is a pi is a mapping from G to G bar, and the Z bar is the identity element of G bar. We collect the elements in G whose image is this E bar under the mapping pi. And the set of all such elements is called the kernel of pi. Of course, the identity element E goes through the identity element. E bar under F of M R V so, so at least E is an element of this cap car pi. So kernel of F of M R V so is a non-empty subset of G. Note that if pi is F of M R V so from G to another group G bar, its kernel is a subset of the domain set G. Note that kernel of pi is not a subset of this G bar. It is the subset of G, and at least E is an element of the kernel of the homomorphism. Now, what are the properties of a homomorphism? If pi is a homomorphism from one group into another group G bar, and E bar is the identity element of G bar, then the first property is pi of E equal to E bar. That is, the identity element of G goes to the identity element of G bar. The second result is pi of x inverse equal to pi of x whole inverse for all x belongs to G. These two results are basic results, basic properties of a homomorphism. Now we have already defined the kernel of a homomorphism. Let us show that the kernel of a homomorphism is a normal subgroup of G. The theorem states that if pi is a homomorphism. Of G into G bar with the kernel K, then K is a normal subgroup of G. Now, what, by definition, what is the kernel of homomorphism pi? K is equal to the elements in G whose image under pi is the identity element E bar. So, kernel of pi is set of all x in G such that pi of x equal to E bar. We know that pi of e is equal to E bar. So, at least the image of E under pi is E bar. Therefore, E belongs to K and hence your K is non-empty. Now let us show that it is a subgroup. So we take two elements X and Y in K. That means the image of X under pi is E bar and the image of pi under pi is E bar. What about the image of XY under pi? That is pi of XY. Pi of XY equal to, since it is a homomorphism, it is equal to pi of x into pi of y. But the answer for pi of x is e bar. And the answer for pi of e is e bar. So we get e bar into e bar, which is equal to e bar, because e bar is the identity element of g bar. So we see that the image of x, y under pi is also e bar. Therefore, by definition of k, x, y is also an element of k. Now what is pi of x inverse? Suppose x belongs to k. Then by definition, pi of x equal to e bar. Let us find pi of x inverse. The property of your homomorphism is pi of x inverse is pi of x whole inverse. And the answer for pi of x is e bar. So pi of x inverse becomes inverse of e bar. Inverse of e bar is e bar itself. So if the image of x is e bar under pi, then the image of x bar is also e bar under pi. That means whenever x belongs to k, x inverse also belongs to k. Therefore, your k is a subgroup of G. Here less than or equal to G means k is a subgroup of G. Now let us show that this k is a normal subgroup of G. We take an arbitrary element G in G and k belongs to K. We want to show that G, K, G inverse belongs to K. Then K will become a normal subgroup. To show that G, K, G inverse belongs to K, we want to show that the image of G, K, G inverse under pi is the identity element e bar. So let us find pi of 
GA G inverse. Since pi is a homomorphism, it can be written as pi of G into pi of K into pi of G inverse. And by the property of a homomorphism, this pi of G inverse is pi of G whole inverse. So we get pi of G into pi of K into pi of G whole inverse, which is equal to pi of G into, since K is an element of K, pi of K is E bar into this pi of g inverse. Pi of g into e bar is pi of g. So here the product of two elements pi of g and its inverse pi of g inverse. So the, pro the product is e bar. So we conclude that the image of g k g inverse under pi is also e bar. Therefore g k g inverse is also an element of the kernel. Therefore this k is a normal subgroup of the domain g. Now let us define an isomorphism. Suppose pi is a homomorphism from one group G into another group G bar. We say that this pi is an isomorphism if it is one, one to one. Note that pi need not be an onto mapping. To show that a particular mapping is an isomorphism, it is enough to show that it is a homomorphism and it is one one. On the other hand, two groups G and G bar are said to be isomorphic if there is an isomorphism of G onto G star. So to show that two groups are isomorphic, we must produce a mapping which is a homomorphism 1, 1 and on 2. But to show that uh, the mapping is an isomorphism, we need not verify that it is on 2. Homomorphism plus 1, 1 implies isomorphism. If the uh, G and the G bar are isomorphic, we write G is isomorphic to G bar. We use this notation. G is isomorphic to G star. Now there is a standard technique for proving two groups to be isomorphic. So pi is a homomorphism from pi into another group G bar with the kernel K. And this homomorphism becomes an isomorphism if and only if k is equal to singleton k. We know that a homomorphism becomes an isomorphism if it is 1 1. So this theorem says that to show that a homomorphism is 1 1, it is enough to show that k is equal to singleton k. So in the case of homomorphism, the 1 1 ness of the mapping pi is equivalent to the kernel is equal to singleton k. If pi is a homomorphism and if the kernel is equal to singleton k, then immediately you can say that pi is an isomorphism. Let us prove this result. Suppose k is equal to singleton k. Kernel is singleton k. Claim pi is 1 1. That means pi of x equal to pi of pi implies x is equal to y. Let us prove this result. Pi of x equal to pi of y implies we multiply both sides by pi of y inverse. So the left hand side becomes pi of x into pi of y inverse. Right hand side is pi of y into pi of y inverse which is equal to identity element. And by the property of the homomorphism this pi of y inverse can be written as pi of y inverse. And since pi is a homomorphism this can be written as pi of xy inverse. So pi of x y inverse equal to e bar. So the image of x y inverse under pi is e bar. That means x y inverse is an element of the kernel. So x y inverse belongs to k. Our assumption is k is equal to singleton k. E is the only element in k. Therefore your x y inverse is equal to k. Multiplying both the sides by y, we get x is equal to y. So pi of x equal to pi of y implies x is equal to y. Therefore pi is 1 1. So, if the kernel is equal to singleton E, then the mapping pi is 1, 1. Now, let us prove the converse branch. Conversely, assume that pi is 1, 1. Claim is k is equal to singleton E. That is, E is the only element of k. Take an arbitrary element x belongs to k. Since x is an element in the kernel, the image of x under pi is the identity element. So, pi of x equal to E bar. Now, this E bar is equal to pi of E. You can replace this e bar by pi of e because one of the properties of your homomorphism is pi of e equal to pi of e equal to e bar. 
so pi of x equal to pi of e and our assumption is pi is 1 1 so this pi of x equal to pi of e implies x is equal to e so if x is an arbitrary element in k then that element coincides with e it means e is the only element in the kernel so k is equal to single delta e so the importance of this result is if we have a homomorphism then to show that it is an isomorphism it is enough to show that the kernel is single delta Now we want some basic results in group theory. The first result is if G is a group and any normal subgroup of G, then G by N is the set of all right cosets. Set of all N G G belongs to G. And this G by N is also a group with respect to the operation N A into N B is equal to N A B. And this group is usually called the quotient group and two right cosets n a and n b are equal not that a and b need not be equal but n a may be equal to n b so this will happen n a equal to n b if and only if a b inverse belongs to n now let us state and prove the fundamental theorem of homomorphisms the statement is pi is a homomorphism from g on to g bar not that the mapping is an onto mapping and the kernel is k. Then we want to show that G by A is isomorphic to G bar. So the hypotheses are pi is a homomorphism and it is an onto mapping, its kernel is k. Our claim is this G by A is isomorphic to G bar. To show that two groups are isomorphic, we must produce a mapping from G by K to G bar. And then we show that that mapping is well defined, 1, 1, on 2, and it is a homomorphism. Then we can say that these two groups are isomorphic. To prove this fundamental theorem, first we need a result. Suppose G is a group, N a normal subgroup of G. Define the mapping pi from g to g by n by pi of x equal to n x. Not that the elements of g by n are right coset. So for every element x in, x in g, we associate a right coset and x in g by n. This mapping is defined by pi of x equal to n x for x belongs to g. And then this pi is also a homomorphism and further it is an onto map. And this onto homomorphism between G and G by N is usually called the canonical homomorphism or natural homomorphism. So whenever we have a normal subgroup of a group G, naturally we have a natural homomorphism from G into G by N. So here pi is uh, the given homomorphism from g to g bar and we know that k is a normal subgroup of g so we can form the quotient group g by k and in between g and g by k there is a natural homomorphism or canonical homomorphism and we want to define a mapping from g by k to g bar so our aim is to construct a suitable mapping between g by k and g bar how to define that particular mapping sign. Consider this figure. Under this pi, the given homomorphism, this g goes to pi of g. Note that this pi is a mapping from g to g bar and this pi takes g into pi of g. And between g and g by k, we have another onto homomorphism, namely sigma. So that sigma takes g into sigma g, sigma g is kg. Now we can define psi from g by k to g bar by psi of kg equal to we want to fix an image in g bar. Already we have an element pi of x in g bar and we associate this pi of x as the image of kg under this psi. 
so we define psi of kg is equal to pi of x so in this way we define the mapping so define pi from g by k to g bar by psi of kg is equal to pi of g for all g belongs to g so we have defined a mapping now let us show that the psi is well defined and note that kg and kh are two right posets they may be equal but g is not equal to h if g is not equal to h corresponding to this kg under psi the value is pi of g and the image of kh under under psi is pi of h if g and h are different then we don't know whether pi of g and pi of h are equal if the elements kg and kh are equal then the images must be equal that is pi of g must be equal to pi of h we don't know whether pi of g equal to pi of h let us show that if kg and kh are equal then pi of g and pi of h are also equal in this sense we say that psi is well defined let us prove that part kg is equal to kh implies g h inverse belongs to k it is a property of right posets since g h inverse is an element of a kernel the image of that element under pi is identity element so pi of g h inverse equal to e bar since pi is a homomorphism it is equal to pi of g into pi of h inverse equal to e bar and pi of h inverse is pi of h whole inverse so pi of g into pi of h inverse equal to e bar now multiplying both the sides by pi of h we get pi of g is equal to pi of h pi of g is your psi of kg and pi of h is your psi of kh so kg equal to kh implies psi of kg equal to psi of kh if the two elements are equal then the corresponding images are also equal that means your psi is well defined now let us show that psi is on to note that psi is a mapping from g by k on to g by k into g bar to show that it is an on to mapping we take an arbitrary element in g bar and show that it has a pure image under psi so we take an element u bar in g bar in between g and g bar pi is an on to homomorphism therefore corresponding to this u bar in g bar you can find an element g in g such that pi of g is equal to u bar since pi is on to since g belongs to g the corresponding kg is an element of g by k okay now our claim is this kg is the pre image of u bar so let us find psi of kg psi of kg is by definition pi of g pi of g is u bar so for every element in g bar we have a pre image in g therefore your psi is on to so we have defined the mapping psi then we have proved that psi is well defined and we have also proved that psi is on to now let us show that psi is a homomorphism psi of kg in the kf equal to by the product of two right cosets psi of kg in the kf is k in the gf which is equal to by definition of psi this is equal to pi of gf and pi of gf is pi of g in the pi of f since pi is a homomorphism pi of g is nothing but psi of kg pi of f is nothing but psi of kf so psi of kg in the kf equal to psi of kg in the psi of kf therefore psi is a homomorphism now let us show that psi is 1 1 since it is a homomorphism to show that it is 1 1 it is enough to show that the kernel of psi is the identity element or the unit element of the domain note that the domain of psi is g by k so to show that psi is 1 1 it is enough to show that kernel of psi is equal to the unit element of g by k that is the identity element of g by k but the identity element of g by k is k so to show that psi is 1 1 it is enough to show that kernel of psi is equal to single term k we take an orbit element kg in kernel of psi then psi of kg is equal to e bar 
a rebar is the unit element of g bar because kg is an element in the kernel of psi. Now by definition psi of kg is pi of g. So pi of g is equal to e bar. If pi of g is equal to e bar, the element g belongs to kernel of pi. Here kernel of pi is k, so g belongs to k. If g belongs to k, then kg is equal to k itself. So whenever kg is an element of kernel of psi, that kg coincides with the k. That means kernel of psi contains only one element, namely k. Therefore, kernel of psi is equal to symbol than k, and again psi is 1, 1. So we have exhibited a 1, 1 onto homomorphism between g by k and g bar. Therefore, these two groups are isomorphic. So g by k is isomorphic to g bar. Now, what is the importance of this theorem? Suppose we want to find all homomorphic images of a particular group G. To find all homomorphic images of G, find all normal subgroups N of G and construct all groups G by N. The set of groups Jo so constructed yields all homomorphic images of G. So to find all homomorphic images, first we find all normal subgroups, then we find all groups G by N. That collection G by N is nothing but a set of all homomorphic images of the group G. Now as an assignment problem, we, I, I would like to propose these two problems. Find at least two applications of the fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms. Then, in the statement of the fundamental theorem, pi is a homomorphism from G on to G bar. We have proved the untrueness of the mapping pi in our proof. What will happen if the mapping pi is not on? How will you apply this theorem when the mapping pi from G to G bar is not on? So, in this presentation, we have proved the familiar theorem in group theory, namely the fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms. Thank you.